Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I cannot believe Valentine's Day is already a month away. We've already gone halfway through January. Time is just flying by already. So I thought I'd jump on and do a tutorial for you this morning. This is gonna show how to bridge Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm gonna show you two different ways to do that on iPad. Uh, you can probably also do this on any touch screen device, I'm guessing not just iPad. Um, that's the only experience I have is working with the touch screen iOS. Uh, so here we go, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna get rid of those. And the first thing I'm going to do, just so that it's at the bottom of my layers, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my stencil square. So at the bottom left, I'm gonna click on shapes there. And then now I'm gonna go to the middle bottom and click on edit and click on my square at the far left here I'm gonna change the color makes it a whole lot easier to see in the tutorials there and I'm gonna also change the size on that the width to 5.5 and since the little lock button is on it makes it a complete square 5.5 inches that will be the size of my stencil I'm just gonna move that off to the side for now while I bring in some text so the bottom left hand corner there click on text and I'm just going to pick a system font. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use all one font. Happy. And I'm going to do three separate. So I clicked off of happy. Click on text again. I'm going to do three separate text boxes. Just so I don't have to slice them apart. And this one will say Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Just Valentine's. Bring that one over there. Click off of that and click on text again. And you can play around with this and make it, you know, two different fonts or whatever you wanted to do. I'm just using the one. So <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is draw a box around all three of those. And at the bottom, click on edit in the middle of that toolbar. And on the far right, it says align. And I'm going to align those to the center, not the center button at the top, but the third one down, align center. And then right next to that, it distribute. I'm going to distribute those vertically. Now, if you wanted these closer together, you weren't happy with how that was, all you would need to do is click on the bottom one, bring it up a little bit, draw your square around there, and we'll realign them to be aligned center line. And on distribute, going to distribute them vertically again so now they're a little bit closer together now that I have the text exactly how I want it I'm going to go ahead down to the middle of the toolbar at the bottom and click on actions and weld that together so it's one unit and the reason I'm doing that is because slice will only show up if you have two items chosen and every one of those letters is an item each word counts as an item so now we have in the bottom left, I'm going to show you in the layers panel. I only have one item as the Happy Valentine's Day words. And now to start with the slicing. First of all, I'm going to make this really big, zoom in. And then I'm going to click off of it so I get rid of that box around it. And screenshot. Then now back in the, let me move that out of the way. I'm gonna click on upload at the bottom left here, select from photo library, and click on happy Valentine's Day photo. And now I'm going to use the crop and get rid of all this extra stuff around it. There we go, in the top left, the check mark, because I've gotten rid of everything that I needed to get rid of there. And now we're going to um, use the Remove tool to get rid of all of these white spaces. Everything in between the A, P, P, all of those letters that have that black hole in them, we're going to get rid of that. you got to click all of those off. Get rid of this couple more. And then I'll show you how to bridge during upload. The one... Um, if you want to call it a disadvantage to doing this way is if you wanted to share this within Design Space once you're done with it, it won't let you because now technically this is an upload. All right, we've got all of those insides of the letters are fixed. 
Now we're going to switch to the eraser tool. And I'm going to bring that down to a size that looks similar width to the width of the letters. Maybe just a little bit smaller than the width of the letters. And I'm going to zoom in and place the eraser not on your letter but nearby. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller eraser. Let's see. And then you're just going to slide up the side of your letter to, er, to erase a piece of that. And now that has created a bridge. You can go up the side like that. I'm going to undo that for a second. If you wanted to just go straight down the center, you can do it that way. It's really a matter of preference, but somewhere this triangle inside there needs to be connected to all of the outside checkerboard. So you just draw your line there. And I'm not going to make these perfect. You can see how I dug into the side of the A. I'm not going to work on perfecting these, just showing you how to accomplish it. Same thing with the P's here. I'm just going to draw through there, and you can see all the bumpies in there. That happens sometimes when I go fast. You just go slow, and it's a nice, beautiful line through there. So you'll, you'll see the difference there, and it's quick and easy to, like if I went super fast and didn't like that, just use the undo button to get rid of that and correct how you want it. So then we'll go on to the A. And you can see in the preview there if you like the way it looks or if you don't like the way it looks, if you want to move it and put it somewhere else. Again, just use your preview and play with the looks of it until you get something you like. So each of these letters that has that inside needs to be connected. I would typically make, you can see here, these two A's are not the same. Normally I'll make all of my A's the same, all of my E's the same, and so on and so forth just so that it looks uniform, which obviously this does not. But um, you can take your time and make those look the way you like. And then when you are happy with that, you would click next, you would click next again, and which I'm not going to, um, oh, I guess I can go ahead and I'll save it and move it, delete it later, save. And then you would just, insert this onto your canvas. So you can see there, right here at the top left, is the bridge one I just did. So that's one way to do that. Another way to bridge is the traditional way. I'm going to make this bigger so that you can see it real well. Another way is the traditional way, which is to bring in a shape, a square, and actually, I'm going to change the color of my font. I'll normally change either the color of the font or the square, just one of them. So on the bottom, I'm going to edit that, change this color, and pick something bright. Just something that's not the same as my square, so it's easy to see to bridge. Unlock the corner of the square. And then again, you're making it just a little bit probably thinner than what the font is in the design. And I want to make it long enough that I can go all the way through my A and my P's and the D down there. So let's see what, how big this D is. Yeah, that'll still fit through the D. So I want to make that long enough to go through all of those so that I don't have to worry about, you know, did I cut into a tiny piece of it. And again, I'm not going to take the time to perfectly place these bridges because I just want you to see how to do it. And I'm a perfectionist and I could spend all day playing with these. So, I have both items chosen. You can do that by pressing on your rectangle and then long pressing on your word or by drawing a box around it. Or a third way to do that is to bring up the layers panel and click on your square and long press on your whatever's below it, in this case our font. So I'm going to get rid of the layers panel. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to draw a box through that and grab actions at the bottom in the middle here and click on slice. Oh, let me undo that because actually what I want to do is I want to duplicate that. Undo. Duplicate that so that I have all of my rectangles are going to be the same size. Okay, so now let's slice that and then before I go any further I would 
go ahead and delete these extra pieces and make sure that I like that before I move on to the next letter so that if I want to change it, it's just a simple couple of clicks to the undo button. And now I want to make this next one straight up and down into that P. And I will duplicate that so that I have it for both of those P's. I want to always make sure I keep that one extra one. I can move that over. Okay. You see, here I go with my little OCD perfectionism trying to, I'm not going to move that. Okay. So, grabbing that one and the one that's behind there, the font and the, the little, the one in the back there, and slice. And now I'm going to get rid of these extra pieces. We go so now I've done that one and I'm going to move my font over just a bit and down actually I want to keep the whole of that P in there so I'm going to duplicate undo duplicate that and move this guy off to the side just draw a line through those two and slice and you can move this down out of your way and just draw a box around those to get rid of those. Pretty much a lot of the functions in Design Space, there are multiple ways to do things. So there's that A. I'm going to duplicate and bring that other one on the other A so that I can kind of eyeball that they're the same. Grab both of those, slice grab both of these and slice. I'm going to go ahead and do both of these A's and then move this off to the side. Get rid of all of these. Oh, now see there, that I love the undo button. I did not duplicate that before I did that last slice. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. Now we're going to slice that. Move this off to the side. Get rid of all of this and bring our rectangle, duplicate that, bring that over here, and now I'll grab, get these E's taken care of. And if you run into like a situation where you see this is gonna cut into the A above it, you can do a couple of things. You can either, you know, just turn it so that it doesn't click into letters, but that always is not an option. Sometimes no matter where you try to move it, you're cutting into something. So what I want to do is maintain the same thickness as the rest. In the bottom middle here of our toolbar, it says edit. We're going to click on edit, and we want to make sure that lock is unlocked in the bottom left corner of our triangle, of our rectangle, and it's also with the width and height in between there. Make sure that's unlocked. You can click on that to unlock it if it's locked. <clears throat> I'm going to change the, I'm going to leave the width the same because I want it to be the same as all the rest, but I'm going to just bring this down to four inches and then we'll see if that, if I can not chop off my E or my A. I'm going to do it a little bit more, so I'm going to go back into that number four and I'm just going to hit the minus button a few times. That should be good. Yeah. So now I'm going to place that making sure it's not catching the bottom of the E anywhere, it's not catching the A above it, and I'm going to duplicate that for the other E. Actions in the bottom middle there. And place that, again, I'm just kind of eyeballing the middle of the E. So grabbing both of my items and slicing, grabbing both of my items and slicing. I'm just long pressing to grab both, get rid of all that. So now we have the center of the A is no longer trapped inside the hot pink color. Same with the centers of the P, these small A's, the E's. There's nothing trapped in, oh, this D is still trapped inside. So we're gonna use this rectangle over here. So you see there's nothing connecting the inside of the D to this white of the canvas and that has to be connected in order for that to not fall out if you cut it in plastic. So we'll go ahead and slice that one and get rid of that. So now once you are happy with the placement of all of your bridges, 
You're going to go ahead and resize that to whatever you need for your cookie cutter. I'm going to go to the edit in the bottom middle there and change the width to, I'm just going to pick three because I don't actually need this for a project. And you see that corner was unlocked, so it completely distorted that. I'm just going to hit the undo button. Grab that again, make sure that is locked. And now I'm going to change that width to three inches. Bring our square over here closer. And then I'll bring this back zoomed in for you. And then now I'm just going to draw a box around those two items. Click on Actions in the bottom middle there. Or excuse me, Edit. We were already on Edit. And now I'm going to, at the far right there, click on Align. And I'm going to center that in the square. This time we're not using the Align Center. We're using the full-on center. We want it centered uh, vertically as well as horizontally. <clears throat> so that's centered now. And then we're going to go back to Actions. We still have both of those items chosen. You can see the faint blue box around the Happy Valentine's Day still. And now I'm going to Attach. And this can also be sliced. That is an option. The reason I typically do Attach rather than Slice it's just less clicks of the undo if I wanted to go back and change something, but either completely works. So now this is ready to go to the Make It Matte. If you cut this out in plastic, all of your centers of your letters will stay in place and you'll be good to go there. Uh, let's see. Where do I go back? Oh, back to the canvas here. I haven't been, done this on my iPad in a long time. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments either here or in the Facebook group. Happy crafting!